Hey everybody, welcome back. Steve Bazik here from Build Show Network. And we're going to start out today with like maybe a little guessing game. So if you look behind me here, we have the headers for the windows here. You can see that it has that header pocket, the detail that I like. But notice here, there's nothing underneath the window. There's nothing that connects it. Nothing connects the drywall to the inside. So I'm going to give you about five seconds to think about why would we do that? Right? Nothing there to connect it. Steve, it looks unfinished. What are you doing there? So the answer is that this is only half the story. The other half of the story is the interior wall. This is a double wall frame. The interior wall isn't framed yet because we're doing the concrete slab here. And go back and check out the uh, videos we did on the concrete slab. I had Christy from Proper Modern Home out here with me, giving us some great explanations and why they made the decisions that they did. But uh, getting back to the wall, we have an 11 inch thick wall where we're gonna complement the two by six wall with a two by four wall here with a two inch space in between. And that all of the windows are then gonna get lined with a plywood Dudley box. And you can check me on that because that's what it's called. The Dudley box, I have no idea where it came from, but I just remember reading it in uh, one of the magazines. And that plywood is what is going to connect the interior face to the outside face of the wall. And the window rough opening is oversized one inch laterally and one inch vertically to complement that future installation of the half inch plywood. So we didn't need to put anything there because the drywall isn't getting attached to this wall. It's going to get attached to the interior wall and the Dudley box is gonna make sure no insulation falls down inside that roof opening. And we have something to connect the windows to. So let's go back to the studio. We'll look at this wall in some details there and we'll get a little bit more of the story. I'll see you back there. Hey everybody, welcome back to the studio. Um, hope you enjoyed that trip out there. Play a little guessing game with you. Um, yeah, double wall framing, it's exciting stuff. You know when the double wall frame gets called into play. We're uh, serious business about performance. So, got my good friend Big Red here. Got some details. Let's uh, have at it. Alrighty. So, look up a couple of details. These are actually uh, a window sill and window head detail at uh, six inch scale. So, half uh, half full size. Um, might be a little smaller to fit on the page, but uh, anyways, you can see here, this is our double wall. There's our outer wall that we had framed there, and then this is that inner wall to, to come shortly. This is what we were looking at when I uh, played the guessing game with you. We had the head plate in there, and we had the headers up there on the outside wall and then to come in the near very near future was the inside two by four wall so there you go there it is there so the two by four wall that's three and a half inches we had a one inch space there and this is five and a half inches or two inches, sorry. Two inches. Because we're at 11 inches overall in our width here. So that's going to give us, what's it, 44. You know, probably right around our 42 ish, something like that, in the low 40s, which is uh, it's a really good number. We're going to fill the whole thing up with cellulose. Um, all 11 inches of it. So I run with about 3.8 per inch. So, and then of course we have the windows here. You can see the windows there, triple glazed, window frame there, triple glazed. Um, so let's talk about the double frame for a little bit. You can see here we have, I that the Dudley box, but 
basically it's just a zip enclosure so we use the 7 16 uh, in this case here it's a 7 16 plywood and we didn't use zip on this project uh, we have plywood sheathing here and the plywood is in here and the plywood is there and uh, I like to have it overlap there so that we get that uh, the end out there to complete the opening um, now that plate does or that closure does a couple things one obviously it closes off the cavity so it can contain the insulation in there and in here um, at the top of the wall we do the same thing and that's to compartmentalize the wall so we don't get fire ripping through the building and flying up our walls um, two it gives us something to attach the window and provide continuity of our control layers All right um, and you know that's one of my favorite words so the the idea there is that you know you have that box and basically the plywood it just folds around the corner from the wall in there so think of it as a you know almost yeah, literally like a cardboard box with the flaps folded in and then we can tape these joints and flash them but then we have continuity of that plane and that plane to then come and put our window in and have our window and then maintain continuity across that opening i mean anytime you have a punched opening that becomes the really big challenge to your control layers building the field of the wall well down here that's real easy it's what happens up here when you put a hole in that wall and how do we maintain it so closing that off and uh basically carrying whatever sheathing I run here I typically run there in this case here we're using plywood um, but in, in the case where if I'm using zip on the outside or zip R we'll just run 7 16 zip inside there and uh, that'll provide the same continuity and then in here you know we have a membrane that actually goes and goes over the plywood on the outside and it goes over out here we have the Sega my vest and that's a pretty much a vapor open self adhered it's the SA so it's self adhered WRB or weather resistive barrier on the outside and then we have our rain screen and then we have our siding is gonna go on there but the idea is that this membrane comes over it attaches to the outside wall frame here and it comes in and goes up over the blocking and then it's it gets connected to the window via some expanding foam sealant and some tape on the outside and the inside after the window gets installed and the same thing happens up at the top that you have the bottom of the window we have a piece of flashing that comes down around the corner here the my vest will come up and they'll go over it there and we have expanding foam there and so we get that continuity across here so it's almost like you know we took this piece of sheathing that would have been there had we not put chose to put an opening there and folded it down and folded it up and then inserted the window and made the connection to that sheathing there and there so basically just completing that detail with that closure piece and then we can go ahead and install the windows and such but you know the beauty of the double frame is that i really like especially when you're doing you know e e exceptional um performance and exceptional performance is probably something you know our 40-ish um, plus on the wall 
it's building that second wall. It's everything that the framer knows. He's just building a second wall to it. And the second wall is simply matching the first wall in rough openings and such. The outside two by six wall, that's our bearing wall. And we know that because that's where we place the headers, right? So basically this is everything on this side of the line. That is nothing more than a standard two by six wall. Now the excessive or exceptional performance, excessive isn't a good word for that, is what we do here in adding, right? So in this case here, we added another five and a half inches for a total of 11 inches, and we did that by a two by four non-load bearing wall with a two inch space. And so there's our additional five and a half inches. Now the beauty of this is, is if you're doing a passive house or, you know, just seeking some type of uh, label to the house, you have the ability to expand the double wall. We, we stopped at 11 inches because that's what we needed to hit the uh, performance metrics that we were in search of on this house. It's passive house inspired. Um, we aren't seeking um, certification on this house. But this could have very easily have gone from 11 inches to 12, 14, or 16 inches, you know, depending on what level of performance we wanted. And all we're really doing is just moving that inner wall to the inside. The 75% of the wall on the outside here, that all stays the same out here. The only thing that's moving is that interior wall. And all it is doing is basically an interior furring of that insulation so that every time I increase an inch, I get an additional, you know, roughly R4. So going to 12, et cetera, you can do the math. Um, but it allows us to dial in that wall. Now, yes, there's some diminishing return that, you know, we don't want to build this wall 24 inches wide um, because we're probably not going to get the benefit that that wall will cost us. But there is a, you know, there is a space somewhere in that 11 to say 14 inches or so that is a, a really good benefit to the cost of it. And I mean, when you think about it, going from 11 to 12 or 14, the only two thing or a couple things that I'm changing I'm adding more insulation and this plywood sheathing, that closure on the box is increasing whatever um, dimension that our wall increases. And then our drywall return and our sill, window sill, would get a little bit bigger. Um, so it's a, a pretty minimal impact to increase that, although you also are losing space in the rooms. But... Uh, you know, I think the largest I've ever done is probably on the order of the 14, maybe one at 16. It was a slightly different wall, more along that perfect wall system. I have a video of that from a couple months ago where we talked about that. But yeah, double wall enclosures, bearing wall out here, non-load bearing wall out there. It's basically just the interior furring of an insulation cavity. And uh, there you go. It's uh, getting us into that R42-ish, Passive House Inspired. And uh, it's going to be a really good home. And, and you get some aesthetics. There's a lot of people that absolutely love the aesthetics of having that, you know, 10 plus inch sill on the inside of their windows and having those deep well pockets um, in there. So anyways... There you have it, double wall framing. All right, that is a wrap on double wall framing. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Always a treat talking about framing. Um, if you're looking for more, there's literally thousands of videos on the Build Show Network. I Yes, thousands, and I confirmed that last week. So 
Remember, you watch them seven times. Get all the info out of it. So go ahead. That's what? Probably 14,000 watches. So go check them out. We got a little bit of work ahead of you. Um, if you're still looking for more, follow me daily on uh, Instagram. Steve Basic Architect. Putting up stuff there all the time. So go check it out. And uh, lastly, you can find me on the Unbuild It podcast. Talking it up with my good friend uh, Peter, Jake. And uh, yeah, we're talking everything building. So enjoy that. Um, the other thing is, is uh, on the Build Show podcast. Did a couple of those with Matt recently. So um, look forward to those uh, coming out. Check them out. Um, Matt always puts up a really good podcast. Um, and uh, when we're together, we always have a really good chat. So enjoy that. But uh, yeah, plug it along. We have a bunch more videos on this house. So follow along and uh, see you next week. Until next time. Long live our buildings.